Last week assignments focused on using um, the internet to find sources for your for your paper. We're going to increasingly now talk more about uh, specific types of sources, especially those offered through the GNTC library for you to be able to find the information that uh, will be beneficial to you as you work on your next assignment for this week, which is the definition right. Um, you had a reading assignment about definitions, and I do want you to know that this assigned right, you've got two weeks to do it. Uh, it's not that it's that complicated necessarily, uh, but I want to give you a little bit of time to work with it and to get feedback on your comparison and contrast with the research paper, um, as well as your fox and the hedgehog assignment, in which you actually have to incorporate documentation. So we want to make sure that you understand the documentation before we move on. Uh, for this particular assignment, you are going to play off of um, for your subject matter, the ideas that were found in that article about zombies that I had you read and take a little reading check quiz. And so your subject um, for this assignment can be the paranormal, um, the supernatural. I want you to pick a particular, and you can't pick zombies because because that was already chosen, but I want you to um, pick a particular type of um, usually fictitious, right, um, or perhaps real to you, um, type of a paranormal, um, uh, oh gosh, what to call it, subject. Um, so it can be anything from gnomes to elves to fairies to um, werewolves, uh, vampires, angels, demons. Pick something that interests you. And then I want you to explore that particular topic um, specifically to get a concrete definition write a formal definition or standard. Those two things mean the same thing and those mean dictionary definitions. And then after that I want you to try and find the history of the word, so an historical definition, and then see what you can find out about um, your particular topic culturally. Okay, but um, quickly I wanted to go through the fact that there are a variety of uh, types of definitions that were not covered by your reading information, um, your reading material. So another type of definition is um, formal, once again we mentioned is standard, um, it's the dictionary expl explanation for what a word means. Um, but there's also a type of definition called an extended definition. It's longer, it's more complex. It, a matter of fact, if you used um, in many ways, that zombie article was an extended definition um, that kind of traced a variety of, of uh, explanations uh, for how the um, concept of zombie, how it originated and how it's changed over time. And in many ways, this right that you're going to do for me is an extended definition. Um, there's also regulatory, which means a regulatory body. Um, is an, It's an officially designated term. Um, so for example, the NFL, if you follow football, have different definitions for, you know, uh, what's considered penalties and um, those kinds of things. And that's, a, those um, are established by a regulatory agency. Now I'm not going to read all of this to you. You can look at the PowerPoint that's in your, um, that's in your uh, week nine folder. Evolving definitions mean um, that the word has changed over time, that originally it meant this, but gradually over time it has come to mean this. And as you saw with the um, zombie example, um, the definition of a zombie has definitely changed over time, right? It, it, it has evolved. Uh, here's some more uh, types of definitions. Um, qualifying definitions, which actually seeks to limit the explanation of a word, um, especially words that are more abstract or subject to dispute. So for example, genius, there are lots of ways to define genius, but one qualifying definition has to do with the IQ test. And you have to have um, a score of 140 or more to be qualified as um, that category of genius. Cultural definition, this is definitely something you can look at as you write, do this little write for me. Um, and notice that the, it's not, this is not an essay where you have to have a, uh, a thesis that you're trying to follow. These are just three thoughtful, well-researched and documented paragraphs um, that talk about whatever your particular um, choice of subject is. Cultural means shaped by time, history, attitudes, and so forth. Um, so just as we saw uh, in that zombie uh, article, 
the idea of what a zombie is is defined by culture in american culture obviously um, a zombie has definitely become um, a very strong symbol for a lot of things about american culture uh, as well as a, a fascination that we have with this whole idea of eating you know the the dead creature that eats brains and uh, you know um and it's, and it's frightening. When we think of The Walking Dead, you think of I, Zombie. Um, there are lots of examples. Um, World War Z, I think, was a movie that had to do with this. Uh, but if you were in, for example, Creole culture, obviously they still have, they have a very different belief about what a zombie is. Okay, and That's all based on culture. Uh, final types of definitions are uh, personal. In other words, your own personal, how you would define a particular term. And then uh, if you invent a new word, um, as a lot of writers do, that's an example of a newly discovered idea, behavior, object, situation, or problem. And whoever invented that particular idea, behavior, object, situation, or problem would define it. Okay, so I want to show you how to go about um, doing, carrying out this assignment. Okay, we're going to use, um, I want to go to Google here to show you how to, well, not even going to do that. To access our library's databases, I'd like for you to um, use one particular database for this assignment. It's a general reference database and it's called Credo Reference. So let me explain how to access it. Um, under My Resources here on the GNTC homepage, select My GNTC. That's not what you want. You want Library, sorry. Select Library. And you'll notice that it pulls up this page. So what we're going to do is access using the Galileo databases. Okay. Um, so select this, okay, then we want to go to databases A to Z. Now we're going to have a much more in-depth lesson on using the GNTC databases in the next, in the upcoming weeks. Um, for our purposes today, I just want you to use Credo Reference. Uh, and by the way, the easy, one of the easier ways to actually access Galileo is on our um, Blackboard homepage. If there is a tab that says Welcome to Galileo, if you select that, it will take you um, right into um, to the system so you don't actually have to go back to the GNTC website. Um, so select databases A to Z and then C because the database that I want you to use for this assignment is Credo Reference. If you scroll down number 26 is Credo Reference. Select it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to to access. All right, this is Credo Reference's homepage. Um, I'll make that move that over a little bit so that you can see. Um, so what we're going to do is put our search term in here. Now, I'm not going to use a different search term. I'm just going to stick with zombies, although, once again, that's a topic that's off limits for you because, once again, it's our example. But I want to show you how to go about finding researching information. Now, please hear me clearly. I do not want you to use the internet for this assignment. I will. The, you cannot get credit for this 50 point right if you use the internet. I want you to use this particular database so that you have some familiarity with using it. Now, this is a general reference database, and general references um, are things like dictionaries and encyclopedias and biographies and the sara uh, the sari or the sauruses. Um, and so, it's a good place to get foundational information. Um, so I'm gonna, going to uh, put in our search term. Notice that it's already starting to like give me some potential search terms that other people have used before. Philosophical zombie, zombie apocalypse, and so forth. Um, but I'm just going to start with a basic search. Now let me show you how to narrow this search. Okay. Select subject here on the left hand side. And then I want to go to General References. So select the little arrow next to General Reference. And this is where it will give me uh, access to dictionaries and encyclopedias. So I'm going to select Dictionaries and Thesauri. And notice what happens is that narrows it down to one definition. So I've gone from, um, I've gone from having too much to, um, to a more specific, um, 
a more specific def, you know, uh, fewer, fewer sources. Um, so I'm, click on, I'm going to click on that title and it opens up for me and it gives me a variety of definitions. Okay. So that I can pull and use the dictionary definition for zombie from the Macquarie dictionary and put that in, 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 um, uh, my right if I were going to do it. Now let me show you something really handy dandy here. Um, Credo Reference actually does the APA formatting for you. So all I would have to do is copy and paste this information into my references page and um, which is wonderful, right? So if you have a, a say a Microsoft um, document, Microsoft Office document set up Let's do a new one here and say this is going to be a reference page I've copied and I'm going to paste it. That's not it. Sorry. Let me go back to let me go back to my source. So highlight it and then, then Control C is a way that you can copy and paste. Or of course, you can right click. Now I'm going to go back to my empty document. Control V and there it is. And all I have to do is go back in and format it. By the way, let me show you a little hint here. Um, if you select this this particular box right next to um, where it says paragraph in Microsoft Word, then under special, select hanging, okay, it automatically will do the indentation for you. Okay. Now you're going to have more than one entry since you are the, your requirement. You're required to have a minimum of three different entries in this right. Okay. Um, you're going to most of them will probably start with they won't have an author. Most of them will probably start with the word zombie. So how do you know how to alphabetize it? The way that you alphabetize it is based on the title of the particular source. In this case, you will alphabetize by by M. Okay, so it would be zombie, then McCrary. Then if I had another source that said it was Chambers Dictionary, that would come before this if it started with zombie, whatever the date, and whatever, and then Chambers Dictionary would go ahead of this because of um, that would be the, the correct um, descending order. All right, so really quickly I want to show you some other options here. I'm going to back, back out to my original search. I'm going to go back to Subject. And then let's just say I want to, um, under general reference, oh, here is mythology and folklore. I want to see that. See what's under that. So here's from Chambers, um, Dictionary of the Unexplained, the Undead. Um, if you, if you scroll down, Brewer's Dictionary of Modern Phrase and Fable. Um, Let's see, the werewolf book. I mean, you'll notice there are all kinds of possibilities here. Um, and so the, the, the key becomes how do you know how to narrow down, right? Um, under general reference, I want to look also, I could also look at encyclopedias, mythology and folklore. Um, I don't know under religion and, and uh, theology if there's anything about zombies, but I could try that. Um, dictionary from the unexplained. We've already seen that one. Uh, we've already seen that. How about under literature? British literature, perhaps. Uh, again, what uh, one of the, the challenges, research can be a lot of fun if you have time to do it, but one of the challenges is finding what you want and a, a lot of times that requires a lot of um, kind of a lot of of trial and error and hunt and peck and that kind of thing. Um, there was something I saw earlier and I'm going to see if I can get us back to that before our time is up here. Um, there was a resource that looked particularly good. Um, geography science. Well, I can't find it now, but it had to do with um, with the supernatural and paranormal in in um, in movies, because we know a lot of our understanding has to do uh, comes from cultural sources, right? Um, so, and notice that you also get all kinds of things like this is the zombie. Uh, there's a, a zombies music group, um, and so you'll get information about that. Oh, here it is: the Ashgate Encyclopedia of Literary and Cinematic Monsters. And this was a really good source um, 
containing a lot of information. So please email me if you have any questions. You'll notice it gives history here. If you have any questions about how to do this, there's the APA format at the bottom.